Assalamu alaikum. Uh, most of you know me uh, from my background in project management. And some of you know me from .NET. Some of people met me that you, know, they, you did .NET or Java from me. But I believe uh, from deep dive, I am more innovative than anything else. And to be very honest, uh, being innovative does not mean you, to ha you have to have a weird haircut or a torn jeans. But I believe uh, maybe yellow socks will work. That we can look for. But interestingly, uh, when we talk about innovation, everybody, uh, every corporate is talking about that uh, we need to have innovative employees or we need to bring innovation. And my innovation journey you know, started back in 2006 uh, when I was giving a presentation to a group of uh, PMO and we were talking about how to set up a PMO, how to manage you know, multiple projects. And then uh, during the presentation, all the you know, group CEOs and uh, all the people were sitting and I asked one question. And the question was, what is one thing you want to change in your organization? And then you know, everybody was saying like, we need to change people, process, technology, right men for the right job, and yes, politics too. And then it comes to the chairman of the group and he said, I want my people to be innovative. That's it. And frankly, I, at that time, I did not know what it means. And I can tell you, rest of the people also know about, don't know about it. Fast forward 2018, uh, same stage, same place. And uh, I was talking about future of CIO. And my idea was very simple that you know, we have a lot of CEOs who are working in companies for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years. And generally, we see CIO as a last job in our career. So what is the future of CIO? And I said that the future of CIO is CEO. When I said this thing, I only ran only one slide. And that was the slide I ran uh, back in 2018. After the presentation, you know, lots of CIOs came to me, I head of ITs came to me and said, Asad, yes, I want to become CEO, what to do? Some says that, Asad, you know, you totally discredit the whole work that we are doing. Some says that, Asad, you know, my company will not make me CIO or CEO. And the reason is basically, you know, we see somehow IT job more operational than strategic. That is one of the core reasons that I identified but now, when I talk about 2022, 2023, and I talk to CEOs, you know, thanks to startup ecosystem, and everybody's talking about a startup launching their own businesses, now CIOs are saying that we need to become CEO. I need a path to become a CEO. And most of them want to launch companies without risking their monthly salaries. They want to to run business as a side business or they want to do something within their organization. And I believe running a business within a business is the most lucrative value that you can get. So today, my presentation is all about how do you build and leverage the innovation or startup ecosystem in your organization, experiment multiple ideas, make one idea or two idea or three ideas successful. And when I say successful, it's very different. You see, when I'm going to launch a company as an individual startup, uh, you know, CEO or a founder, for me, the success would be a million dollar or two million dollar or 50 million dollar. But consider that you're working in a company who's already earning a billion dollar, whose revenue is multi-billion dollar. But then you cannot just launch a company who is 30, 40 million dollar. You need to talk about above 40 million dollar. And McKenzie data says that one of the top three priority of CEOs is to launch a new business, which should generate at least 50% of their current revenue in next three years. So that is the need of a market. And I believe that technology is something where we can play around. A question came in that, how do we see IT in a technology, or how do we see technology in a business? I was attending a workshop, and guy was from TCS, and he said, we need to make a decision that are we a 
distribution company or courier company using technology or we are a technology company doing the distribution or courier system. See, that is the mindset. That is the mindset that is being used by Uber and all these things. And we need to change that mindset in our organization. So here are five questions. And I'm going to explain you know, each question, what it is, how you can ask these questions in your organization. How do you find the answer for these? And then you can you know, launch or design a new company or launch a new company and make it successful. And I'm going to say it again. Making it successful is very different for a general startup to a corporate startup. So success means 50% revenue within three years. That is the benchmark that you need to look into it when you talk about the corporate startup or corporate innovation. So question number one, what is your corporate strategy? You know, uh, when I talk to people and I, I find out that strategy is something that everybody fantasizes. Everybody is like, you know, I'm strategic. I want to talk about strategy. I'm a strategic resource. But when it comes to the real meaning of a strategy, very few are those who are actually articulating it. And then most of them are very much successful in understanding the business strategy. How do I compete in my segment, my area, my industry? But the main thing is, what is your organization, your group corporate strategy? In which areas you want to explore? In which areas you want to build a new company? I met at least 10 different companies in the last two years, and I asked, what kind of a business you want to start? And you know what everybody said? We want to go into technology. And then I said, what do you mean by technology? And I have a lot of interesting numbers that AI has a value of $100 billion. Blockchain has a value of $100 billion. Metaverse has a market value of $1 trillion and whatnot. And I said, hold on. What is your strategy? What you are going to do? Are you going to try every single thing in technology? Or are you going to try something specific? What is your strategic goal? What is your direction that you want to go? Or just saying that we are going into technology. So just going into technology, just saying that technology is not going to solve. You need to sit and define what could be the best option for you. And you may change strategy based environment. One of the interesting examples is Pretty Boy when they were expert in sending physical mail systems. And when they wanted to transform, they find out that their capacity and capability is all about understanding the database of houses, database of locations. So they actually build a new company by you or leveraging that database. So one of the strategic perspective could be that how can we use or leverage our current data? And the I would say the typical example right now here is you look at Mobilink and Telenor. They both are actually selling CRM solutions. They both are selling you know, data solutions. And that was not there. So basically, they are software houses. They are technology companies. In Dubai, Atasalat is saying that why you are purchasing license, Microsoft license or application license from someone else, we are giving you internet, buy a license from us. So see, a telecom operator is selling the operating license, op application licenses. So that is where they are actually leveraging their knowledge, their capacity, their capability. So the first question for CIOs is that when you talk to your management, when you are discussing that, OK, we need to see a new area, we need to talk about technology. So from a business perspective, Technology is just a theme, not a strategy. What you are going to focus within technology and which area or which segment, then you are going to build a business out of it. Otherwise, you will be thinking about buying one company here, buying a comp second company here, trying to do one project here, one project there, and then saying that, you know, uh, we are good what we are doing right now. So that is the first question. And we need to find out the answer, number one. Number two, do you have a balanced portfolio? You know, when I go and talk to companies, even uh, companies whose job is not doing project management, uh, be it HBL, Indus Motors, Pakistan Suzuki Motors, you know, Aga Khan Hospital, 
and on average those these are the companies who are not doing project they are not selling project management they are not consulting firms on an average they are doing around 100 150 projects per annum but when you closely see their projects you find out that most of their projects are to run the current business overall the data they have overall number of projects they have you can say 80 90 probably 95 percent of projects that how can we improve our efficiency how can we increase our customer base how can we sell more what we are selling and using the technology for that but what about disruption let's suppose if your industry is going to be disrupted you will be nowhere there are a lot of companies who are like nokia like blackberry like Blockbuster, so they all were investing, like Kodak, right? They all were investing, how can we do current business in a more better way, more efficient way? But the real source is how, much, how many projects you have, which is to build the future. How many new ideas you are going to invest in, right? When I was looking at the data, so I find out that Bosch, actually with 67 billion dollar and a billion pounds annual revenue they build around 200 teams 200 ideas out of 200 ideas they selected only 60 then 60 then 15 then three and all three become their big businesses so there is no such thing like we need to find one best shot no way it's not gonna work we need to try three or four or five or probably 10 different ideas and see how many of these, these ideas are going to give us return. Probably, you know, in a, in a number point of view, six will not work, three will get some success, and one probably will, you know, make your company a new company or give you a new project out of it. So that is very important to see that is your portfolio balanced or not how many resources you are you know uh, applying for the new ideas i met lots of people you know and people talk about that we are doing uh, we are bringing a lot of new people we are bringing young kids and they will generate out of it something but if they don't understand the business if they don't understand the capability and capacity it's not going to work we need to find out how we are going to prioritize our initiatives and how we are going to see. Because if you look at the project's data, you will find out that every project is urgent and important. And most of the projects are basically regarding the operational excellence. And whenever you have some urgency, whenever you have some downtime, you kill innovative projects. You say that you know, we don't have enough money. So how do you protect that? How do you balance your portfolio? Then I believe this is the most important element. We want to innovate we want to talk about innovation but we don't want to build a system around innovation we still run our organization from a bureaucratic perspective and some organization thinks that if we have innovative rooms idea rooms you know bean bags red walls so we will have you know a lot of uh, innovation i don't know how you can get new ideas by sitting on bean bags i don't know I tried a couple of times, but I never get. So the point is, uh, you need to build an organization within an organization. You need to set up a corporate nucleus within an organization. And that nucleus is not something like a couple of companies are doing that. They are setting their innovation house outside their core office. There's some, I know one Brazilian company, they said, we want to be innovative. They build an office in San Francisco. Another company in Saudi Arabia, they said, we want to be innovative. They built an innovative innovation house in uh, Dubai. And a couple of companies in Pakistan, they thought, we need innovation. Why not build a company, very good environment and you know, furniture and everything in a very, you know, very interesting place. But how you are going to connect the dots with the current people? It's not like that when you will have a new company, you will disband whole of the organization. No, it's not going to work. You need to see how you build the collaboration of the new idea with the existing idea. What models, what features you are going to involve into it. So that is very important that you need to build a dual operating system in your organization. One system which is running the current organization and another system which is going to build the future. So that's how you are going to work on these things. Then the next important thing is, 
Now everybody's talking about design thinking, you know, everybody's talking about agility. I find out that we are less agile and more agile. And we talk about running iterations, having number of people, daily stand-ups, meetings, brainstorming with zero results, or maybe fewer results. So we need to understand that when we talk about innovation, we need to have a standard procedure process like we do for other areas. How do we select ideas? How do we prioritize ideas? What is our model for problem solution fit? What is our model for uh, product market fit? And more importantly, how do we scale ideas? You know, Kodak has most patents, but they were not able to realize their patents. Uh, Xerox, Park, their ideas were actually used by Apple. They were unable to make it marketed. So that somebody else is get actually getting money out of it. So that's very important that how you are using or practicing, not just to have a research, not just to have a patent, but also to commercialization. Finally, you know, another important element is somehow from a project perspective, we all are prisoners of triple constraints. Whenever we talk about project, it's all about time, cost, scope. But when you talk about innovative product, when you talk about launching a new idea, when you talk about setting up a new business, these are not the matrices that you need to look into it. You need to see how we are going to measure our idea generation. How do we measure the implementation part? How do we measure the creation of new knowledge? That's a very different matrix and KPIs that we need to look, rather than talking about in terms of ROI in terms of developing a specific business case, payback period, it's not going to work. So finally, as I am here giving the presentation, I think I need to take a sales hat also. And as a sales, we are offering here two uh, solutions. One is that if you want to train your team on how to understand these five questions and master the frameworks and tools that will help you to launch a company, then you can go for the training or you can get our you know, new model that we're talking about, PMO startup, or a startup PMO, that how we can work with you to design this strategy, to identify the ideas, to execute the ideas, and to make it successful. So that's all from my side, and I believe that I end my presentation within that time period. And I try to do new things, and uh, the last thing that I talk about myself is, manzil ki talash nahi, चलने का शौक है मंजिल की तलाश नहीं चलने का शौक है चलते चलते लोगों के लिए रास्ता मैं बन गया थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच असद थैंक यू सो मच वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड फैबुलस प्रेजेंटेशन आई मस्ट से